All right, we're back out here live at CPAC 2024, joined now by Senator Tommy Tuberville as one of the key speakers here at CPAC, and you're probably I, one of the greatest fighters that we have at CPAC, and we talked about this in our pre-show. Thank goodness you're working for our country. Well, it's, you know, living up here four or five days a week, it's good to be here today where you have so many friends here at CPAC. <laughs> we don't have, I mean, there's more here than is in the whole, whole uh, Capitol Hill, but it's good to be here and, uh, you know, looking forward to the next 10 months, the fight, trying to get President Trump reelected, and uh, by golly, we better because our country's in trouble. We talked about this earlier. Uh, if there's ever a time to get out and vote and make sure that you support uh, the America First agenda and President Trump and people like uh, Senator Tuberville, it's right now. Is this the most important election that, you, that you've seen in our lifetime? Well, we've had some very important ones. Uh, I personally know it is most important because I see what goes on here every day. It's a complete disaster. Uh, the American citizen, the taxpayers of this country are being overwhelmed by the, uh, the communist socialists of the Democratic Party here. They listen to nobody other than themselves. Barack Obama said, we're going to transition this country when he became president. Well, uh, about 12 years later, they've done a good job of it. And we mm -hmm. better wake up because if we don't wake up, we're, we're going to lose what we've had for 248 years. Okay. Uh, just about two weeks ago, we impeached uh, Alejandro Mayorkas in the House. That now goes to the Senate. So I know a lot of our viewers are thinking to myself, what happens now with this impeachment? And what do you what do you see it going from there? Well, there's a dozen of us that, in the Senate that signed a, a letter to uh, Leader McConnell saying, "Please get this on the floor. He's got to go to trial." But it really, to me, it's a wrong trial. He needs to be in a court where it's a criminal trial. He's a criminal. He has killed many people in this country by opening up our borders. He's told me personally, Coach, our our borders are closed. I mean, the guy doesn't know know the difference. But it's a plan. It's a plan for the Democrats, the globalists, to overrun our country. We've got tens of millions of people here that shouldn't be here, and uh, it's costing us a lot of money, and a lot of people have died, unfortunately. But President Trump will come in, and we're going to send him home. A lot of people have said, Coach, that he's only taken his orders from Biden. So my next question is, well, then why don't we hold Biden accountable yeah. for what Mayorkas did and, and go ahead and start pushing those articles of impeachment as well. Yeah, and you got to remember, we got we have two senators from Arizona, a border state, that are Democrats. We have two senators from California, that's a border state, that are Democrat. They should be held accountable. But Joe, this is a plan not just from Joe Biden, but the entire Democratic Party of just running this country in the ground. Again, they're globalists. They want us to be something different. We're a third world country now in our bigger cities. Coming to a neighborhood near you, by the way, if we continue with these people, we have got to get President Trump reelected because it is necessary to get our country back on track. It's interesting you say that, that we just got back from Michigan for a Trump event, and we've been in New Hampshire and Iowa as well the last uh, three, four months. The number one issue, Coach, is the border. Oh, they yeah. want to close the border. And I don't know how, how many times that we need to say that, uh, but for some reason the Biden administration and everyone, Kamala Harris, and it just falls on deaf ears there. Yeah, everybody says the border, and it is our number one issue. But just think about this. Crime is overwhelming. Our debt is $35 trillion. Our education mm. system has gone to hell in the handbasket. Folks, our education system is gone because of our unions in this country have mm. run it in the ground. Our young people are looking at Democrats as the right way to go when it's socialism and communism. And it's all through our education system, but you're exactly right. We have got to get this border closed. And let's talk about money. Uh, right now, we are the deficit is out of control, but we continue to send more money to Ukraine to fund a proxy war, in my opinion, with Russia. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's devastating. I've not voted for one dime to go to Ukraine. I was there right before the... The war started uh, talking with President Zelensky. They really have no chance to win at the end of the day. You know, they, they don't have enough people. And they know that, right? And, and you know, uh, Putin's wrong. He's wrong to have gone into that country, but we pretty much forced his hand by saying Ukraine needs to be in NATO, and it doesn't need to be in NATO. We wouldn't want Mexico to be part of China Correct. Uh, on our borders. Uh, but there's a lot of if ands, and buts here, but it's directly come from the Democrat globalist who's pushing the agenda all over the world. We're, we're in three basically regional wars right now, and we can't afford one, much less three. Yeah, it's amazing how much, I think the total was, and you probably know this, was like $223 million a day 
gets funded towards this war in Ukraine, and there's no accountability of it. And we've all we've asked for an audit. We want to know yeah. where this money's going, and they're simply that they've got millions that are just lost. Yeah, and the American taxpayer needs to know this. As we speak, we're borrowing. The federal government is borrowing eighty thousand dollars a second, four point six million dollars a minute, and putting on the credit card of the American taxpayers mm -hmm. to fund all these wars, all these bureaucracies up here in D.C., the 23 million uh, federal employees now, which is a record. It is a disgrace where all this money is going, but we are we don't have the money. We're borrowing it, and American taxpayers and your kids are going to have to pay this back. We have got to get Donald Trump back into office where we can cut back on all this federal spending. Let's talk about things that are going on in your neck of the woods. What are your constituents uh, in your state telling you that that's what's the number one priority for them and how do they feel right now about this election? Well, there's no doubt what we talked about earlier. The border is overwhelming our state. We've had some schools, high schools, in the last three years go from 20, 25 percent Hispanic to almost 70 percent Hispanic. Our, our educators can't, they can't handle it. I mean, mm -hmm. we're getting overwhelmed. Our health care system is being overwhelmed. Uh, our, our veterans are being overwhelmed. People don't know this. I've got a bill on the floor trying to get it on the floor through Schumer that now Joe Biden is allowing veteran VA money to be spent on illegal immigrants. Think about that now. Mm. We're having a tough enough time with our 22 million veterans we have now. Now we're having to put and take care of these illegal immigrants coming in. So if you're a veteran, call the White House and tell them quit spending money, quit spending VA money or any money on these illegal immigrants. Real quickly, uh, you're speaking later. Give me a, an idea of what our viewers can hear. Yeah, we're going to talk mostly about my expertise, which is obviously education. I've sure. spent 40 years in it, and that's one of the reasons I came here, because I saw the things that we're teaching in schools. We're teaching business math, these very simple math to our high school students when they're in China. In elementary school, they're teaching algebra. They're teaching calculus. I mean, we're dumbing down our education system so bad, and yeah. it's going to put us in a situation where we're not going to be able to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak. We're teaching kids how to duggy on TikTok is what we're worried about teaching <laughs> exactly. our kids right now, and that's exactly, exactly what's going on. All right, let's talk football first for a second. Uh, uh, let's talk college football. What do you, what's your expectations for next year? Uh, how did you think the playoffs unfolded this well, past year? Well, first of all, we're disappointed if you know, somebody in the SEC didn't win the national championship. Michigan won it. Uh, they, they've had a good run. But let's talk about college sports in general. Number one, women in women – participating against men in sports. Would you ever think that'd be a topic back when I can't you started 40 years ago? No, no, no. no. We're, we're, the, we're the feminist groups that actually got Title IX through. And the other thing is the NIL, which is the name, image, and likeness. I'm for all athletes making some money, but I'm not for a few making millions of dollars and the rest of the 90% not making any money. It's going to ruin college sports. I, I agree. I've had a lot of people tell yeah. me that when you see uh, – uh, Deion Sanders' son rolling up to practice in a Lamborghini and getting out with more gold around his neck than Birch Gold has right now. Uh, I think that's wrong. I, I think it sends yeah. the wrong message to young athletes. Well, again, it just the whole scenario with the Democrats is globus. Let everybody in. Let's do away with gender. You know, men yeah. and women's sports. Let's attack sports, which is one of the best things that we've got in this country because it teaches teamwork and hard work, work ethic, and all those things. Let's do all these things to, to bring our country down uh, and, and to make basically fools of the, the American taxpayer. That they, are, they are charging the American taxpayer to do all these crazy things across the country, and they're taking advantage of what they're doing right now, the Democratic Party pushing all this agenda on uh, people that just want to have an everyday life and be an American. Yeah, one final question. It comes from my camera guy who has a picture of you uh, and him years ago. Uh, President Trump got snubbed in 2020, very much like you got snubbed, I think, in 2014, <laughs> right? Yeah. Was it 20? You got the year right. 2004. Four, 2004. 2004. Sorry about that. Yeah. Hard. That's tough, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's tough. But you're right about President Trump. We know now that they stuffed the ballot box. Sure. They took advantage of COVID. Uh, you know, President Trump was up in all, all the, the swing states. Uh, about 11:30, 12 o'clock, he called me the night I won. He said, "How's it going?" He said, we, "We've we've got this handled because we're way up in all these." And then, of course, all of a sudden they shut down the counting of the votes and just just brought in enough sure. votes to beat him, right? So we've got to make sure that doesn't happen this time. But we're just going to overwhelm at the ballot box this year. Got to go out and vote. 
we got to get President Trump reelected. We do absolutely have to do that. Also, let's just go ahead and crown you guys the national champs in 2004. Yeah, let's do that. Since uh, USC got disqualified, and the other, you have the exactly better right. record, undefeated. Coach Good Tub, point. thank you so hey, much. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you guys. Hey, we're going to take a quick 60 second timeout. We'll continue our coverage live here at CPAC 2024 here in Washington, D.C. Stick around.